Hey guys, I recently created a video about my trip to Jamaica. And for this trip, I decided I was gonna bring along my Panasonic GH5 to capture the experience. If you wanna check out the video, you can check it out right over here. Unfortunately, when we were coming in for a landing, I did not have my Panasonic GH5 with me. And the only thing I had was an iPhone 11. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna use the iPhone 11 to capture us landing on the island because I did wanna capture that part of the trip. So when I look back at the footage, I was not very happy with the footage. It definitely wasn't my best but I decided I was still gonna use it. However, I wanted to make it look a little bit better. And what I decided to do was I was gonna add some lightning effect to the video to make it stand out. And so the video went from looking like this to looking like this. So in today's video, I wanna show you how you can use Adobe Premiere and After Effects for tracking to make your videos better and stand out. All right guys, so now that we're in Premiere, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna select the clip that you wanna use. So I'm gonna be using this clip right here. I'm gonna go ahead and select an in and out point. So I currently wanted to start here. So I'm gonna select in and I wanted to stop, say around, oh, that's good, right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this clip and drag it into my timeline. So I don't like the fact that it's not leveled. So I'm just gonna go ahead and level it really quick. So I'm just gonna rotate it probably, probably around there. I'm just gonna, scale it up a little bit to get rid of those corners. There we go. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna bring this clip into After Effects. So I can do this by right clicking on it and going up to replace with After Effects Composition. All right, now that After Effects is open, the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna select an area that you're gonna track. In my case, I wanna put the lightning in this area, so I'm gonna to have to track something within the vicinity. In this case, you wanna pick something that has more contrast and is not gonna be obstructed in any way. This way, the software can track it easily. So therefore, I'm gonna to try to track this portion of the clip. So the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna click on Effects. You wanna to go to Boris Mocha. And you wanna open that up. Once you have this window, the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna click on the X-Spline tool. Now you're gonna select the area you're gonna track. In my case, it's gonna be this area right over here. So once you are done with your selection, just right click on the mouse and there you're done. You can make finer adjustments if you need to. I'm gonna to try to stay away from the clouds because the clouds are constantly changing and I don't wanna track that just in case that messes up my tracker. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the play to track the frames forward. At this point, the software is tracking the portion of the clip that I selected. Okay, now that it's finished, I just wanna go back and review and see how well it tracked it. Yeah, that looks great. It did a great job. So I'm happy with the outcome. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the save button right over here, and then I can go ahead and close the window. Next, what you wanna do is you wanna create a new null object. This can be done by clicking on a layer, new, null object. Once you've done that, go ahead and click back on your clip. Once you have your clip selected, go ahead and click on tracking data. And what we're gonna do here is we are gonna create the tracking data that you pulled from the clip. So go ahead and click on create track data. You wanna make sure that layer one is selected. And then next, you wanna click on transform we are gonna click on null one. And what it's doing here is your, all your tracking information is now gonna be pulled and it's gonna be saved to null one. So we are gonna go ahead and keep this at source and we're gonna go ahead and apply export. And now if you look at the screen, you can see my tracking data. And there it goes. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna select the lightning. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on project and I'm gonna go ahead and import the clip that I want. So if there's a thunder, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in. I'm gonna click on it and let me see which part I want. I really like this portion. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna bring it in right here. I'm gonna start it there and I'm gonna end it right about here. Okay, now that I have my in and out point, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take it and drag it into my sequence. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it at the very top 
and I want to go ahead and change it to screen. So once I've done that, I can see it right there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and take all the tracking information from no one and I want to apply it and parent it to my thunder. So I'm going to go ahead and do so right here. So now all my tracking information is being applied to the thunder. However, I need to resize it. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to make it smaller. Uh, let me see how that looks. I'm going to bring it right over here. Okay, now I just want to see what it looks like. That looks great. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And let's see how it looks up close. That looks pretty awesome. I'm happy with that. The only thing I'm going to do next is I'm just going to go ahead and click on no one object. And what I want to do is I just want to turn off the scale because I don't need that information. The only thing I need is the position and rotation. So I'm just going to keep it that way. So now that I have that, I'm happy with it. I'm just going to go ahead and click on save. So once I have that information saved, I can go back to Premiere. You can see that we have the lightning and it looks great. I'm happy with that. However, I just want to make it look a little bit more realistic. And what I want to do is I want to add a little bit more flash in this area for coming out from the lightning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this layer and I'm going to go to color and I'm just going to add a little bit more exposure. Now I'm going to go back to editing and I'm just going to create a mask around that. I don't want the whole screen to light up. I just want this area to light up. Probably that much. Maybe that's a little bit too big. I'm also going to go ahead and feather that like this and just let me see what it looks like. Okay. So if we play it now, let's see how it looks. It's pretty good. I think I'm going to feather a little bit more. I think I'm happy with that. You could see the little flash that it creates around that. So what I want to do next is I want to go ahead and track that mask to that area. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is click on the mask and I'm going to start there. So I'm going to go ahead and create a path and I'm just going to follow along and I just want to keep it within that area. So probably right over here, I'm going to move the mask maybe a little bit that way. There we go. That looks good. Okay. Once I have that done, that looks great. I don't want the flash to be constantly there. Okay. I only want the flash to happen whenever the lightning is striking. In this case, there's nothing here. So I'm going to go ahead up to opacity. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and I'm going to set it to zero because I don't need it right now. But on the next frame, right about here, we're going to get a flash of light. So I'm going to go up to, I want to say, let's go up to 83%. That's great. On the next one, right around here, it's a pretty, I'm just going to go up to 100%. Right here kind of goes down. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Get strong there. So we're going to bring it up to 100 here. Actually, let me go back a frame because right here it gets kind of weak. So I'm actually going to pull it back a little bit. I want it around, I'll say, 19%. So I'll do the same thing here. It kind of goes down a little bit. So I'm going to remove some of that opacity. On the next shot, it gets a little stronger. On the next one, it gets a little bit dim. So I'm going to bring that down. And it kind of goes away on this part right here. So I'm going to bring it down even lower. However, the lightning strike gets strong again. Mess around with it, kind of make it a little bit more believable. And right here, it's almost gone. So we're going to end in a lightning strike again. 100, 100, 100. And right here, we're almost gone. But I'm just going to keep it around 40%. And then it gets strong again. So you get what I'm saying. So I'm going to just do this really fast. All right, there we go. So at this point, let's see how it looks. And there it is. So it's believable. It actually looks like the lightning is actually there. So let's go over here and let's see how it looks. Looks great. I love it.
You can also use the same technique to replace skies, add flames and other effects to your videos that will make your video stand out. So thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.